What's up, everybody? I want to talk about how to not suffer in climbing um, because hard climbing involves a tremendous amount of suffering, as anyone watching this already knows. So I think it's really important if we want to feel like we're not suffering and, and feel like we're maximizing our happiness from climbing, it's really important for us to kind of have our heads screwed on straight um, in terms of what we're trying to get out of out of the process, out of all the effort that we're putting into it. So. Basically, in my view, there are three main things that you could be trying to get out of a, a day climbing or out of your climbing in general. And those are fulfillment, progression, and performance. And I'm not gonna say that you have to pick one, although sometimes I think it is helpful to pick one. It, it's kind of a false dichotomy, and I think that would be intuitively obvious to just about anybody that these things are not separate, right? Because the feeling of progression, once you realize that you're making progress, is very fulfilling. And performing really well on something hard is very fulfilling once you've succeeded. Uh, the process might not be quite as fulfilling, but that's something we can talk about uh, a little bit later. Um, and I think the, the opposites are true as well. You sort of need a feeling of fulfillment in order to progress because feeling fulfilled is very motivating. And if you wanna make progress in something that's difficult, if you wanna remain challenged and keep trying, um, well, then you need to feel a little bit fulfilled so that you are motivated. It's definitely helpful. And the same goes for, for performance. If you feel completely unfulfilled by trying to perform, then you're going to have a really hard time climbing at your best. Uh, personally, I've felt like when I want to climb at my best, it's really important for me to get fulfillment out of the process and not to be too focused on the outcome of what it is that I'm trying to do, which is contradictory because when you're really trying to climb at your hardest, you are trying to do that. You're not just trying to try to do that. If I want to climb a V12 or a V13, you know, a really hard boulder for me, I absolutely need to want that outcome of doing it. And if I only focus on the process, then I feel like I hit, you know, like 80 or 90% motivation and I never get to that absolute, I will hold on no matter what happens, no matter, you know, bleeding or screaming or pain or whatever, I will hold on and, and do the thing. Um, being somewhat focused on the outcome is really important to achieve that level of intensity and that level of try hard. Okay, so if all three of these things are mixed together, then then what's the point, right? And uh, not to get too metaphysical, but I think the point is it, it, all, it all really comes down to this Buddhist idea of avoiding unfulfilled desi desire. Um, like the Buddha said that the, the state of happiness is a state of not having desires that you haven't fulfilled. So basically, if you want something and you don't have it, that's suffering. And if you don't want anything that you don't have, that's happiness. All of us want things all the time, right? But some of those are things that we already have. There's like two cute dogs in this room. I don't have to worry about wanting a dog because I, I have the dogs right there. And so I don't have suffering as a result of that. You know, I have, a, I have shelter and and food and, and love in my life. And I have those things, so I don't need to want for those things. And that makes it easier to be happy. One interesting thing about the human psyche is that we're very quick to adjust to new normals and to adjust to expectations. So if we put more weight on the bar and we do a, a PR um, lift, then it's very easy for us to think that that's the weight that we're gonna lift every week for the rest of our life. Uh, if we do a boulder, a, gra a boulder grade faster than we usually do it, you know, or if we on-site a new, a new letter grade um, route that we have never on-sited that grade before. It's very easy for us to start thinking that that's how we're going to perform all the time. And, and this goes back to the grades versus skills thing, because it's easy for us to think like, oh, that grade, I've had that experience on that grade. Therefore, my expectations are now that I will have that experience on that grade in the future. That's the experience that I'm going to have on that grade every time. But of course, not every prop, not every problem or route is the same, right? Not every 12B is the same set of moves that you on-sighted. Not every V10 is the same set of moves and the same set of situational logistics that you had a good experience on before. So you're not going to have that same experience on every V10 that you try. But regardless of the fact that that's true, it doesn't change the fact that when we have those good experiences, it's very hard to not sort of project that desire of having that same experience or even a better experience on the next thing of that same grade or on the next deadlift session or whatever it is that you're talking about. You can't make yourself not desire those things. If, 
if it's something that you want, especially if you're an athlete, a super highly motivated person, and you really want these things intensely, it's not like you can just flip a switch and be like, nah, I, I no longer want to climb V13, even though that's all I've wanted for the last, you know, however long months or years or whatever. Like now I'm going to let go of that dream, you know, perfectly timed right when I pack up the car to head out to try the V13. Now I don't actually really want to do it, right? That would be a complete fallacy. So what I'm shooting for when I say pick one is when you're getting ready for that session or when you're trying to decide what you're going to do, like this is something that I talk with my clients about all the time. When you're trying to decide, you know, it's, it's the end of the season. It might be the last day of no rain for who knows how long, maybe until February, could be months. Um, what do you do with that day? And I often ask them, you know, if, if this is the last climbing day for months, like what will bring you the greatest joy in that, in that final day? Do you, do you really want to put it on the line and try to perform on something? Understanding that you may incur more suffering because you are, you know, directly bringing that desire to bear on the rock. Or do you want to just go out and, and try to learn something about your climbing, try to learn something about yourself so that you show up to next season a little bit better? That'd be the progression goal. Or do you just want to go out and, and climb some stuff, you know, touch some holds, feel some moves, um, maybe get on top of some, some boulders or some roots. And that would be like the fulfillment sort of goal. And if you can, if you can twist it, if you can get yourself to feel fulfilled by the feelings of progression and performance, then that's great. Those athletes tend to progress the fastest. But like I said earlier, it's not something that you can just make yourself do. It really does require a lot of practice. Personally, I try, to, I try to think about my day in terms of what am I actually trying to get out of this right now? Am I trying to do this thing and I'm expecting that when I come home later today, all tired and beat up and like bleeding out of my fingers, I'm going to be like a little bit more upset if I didn't do it? Or am I just going out and, and having a day and expecting to have fun with my day and to be satisfied and happy with it, understanding that that might take a little bit of the edge off of my performance because I'm not pressuring myself quite as much as I otherwise would be? Is this going to magically make you suffer less to make this decision consciously before you go out? No, probably not. You're, you're still going to suffer because you're still going to bleed from your fingers and, and scrape up your knees and, and fall really hard on the pads and, um, you know, take big whippers and, and get really scared uh, when you're running it out and stuff. And, and those kinds of suffering are those pieces of suffering in the moment are just intrinsic to climbing. There's no getting away from that stuff. But I do think in the long run, if you want to be satisfied with your climbing and you want to progress as much as possible and you want to perform as close to your genetic limit as possible, then you want to minimize the existential suffering, the suffering outside of the session as much as you possibly can. And I think a very effective way to do that is to be very clear with yourself about what you're trying to get out of each session and out of each week and out of each season. Um, and if you're honest with yourself, then I think that's a really useful strategy for reducing your suffering. Good luck.